Hello, this is the Art Ambassador. Welcome to our program on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. Thank you for joining us. We're going to talk about art and artists and the challenges that artists face to get their art out into the world and get the recognition they want from their artwork and the recognition they probably deserve. Many artists want to be better known for their art, and for some, it can be a real struggle. Others seem to just rise above it and don't have any problem. And then others have great confidence in the world, in their work, and then when they get out into the art world, it all falls apart. Navigating the art can be a big mystery. So what makes the difference? When you walk into a gallery, do you wonder why that art is on the walls and not yours? And I wonder, do you have a dream of seeing your art on the walls of galleries and museums? That's not just for everyone else. That can be for you, too. I believe it can happen. And I also believe it doesn't have to be a struggle. I love helping artists, and my track record of success keeps growing with artists. And at the same time, I know how challenging it can be. I'm a former gallery owner, so I have a lot of firsthand experience, both working with artists and working with the public. And I can tell you that artists and the general public see art differently. In fact, they probably see everything differently. When you're making your art, you see making artwork and artwork as, as a creator. Uh, but when you're looking at it as a member of the general public, you see it completely differently. I used to be amazed at the completely different reactions that people would have when they would come into my gallery. Seeing the same works of art on the walls would trigger completely different reactions in people. And it was fascinating. It was fascinating to observe that and to interact with people and to see how much that artwork that they were looking at meant to them in a personal way. My goal has always been to bring the two sides together, the artist and the general public. And I recognize that not only do they come from two different places, they really need each other. With a bridge, they can be connected. And that's what I consider myself to be, is a bridge. Um, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we have bridges. I'm crossing bridges all the time. Bridges are essential to keep us connected, to bring us together. Over the years, I've learned a lot about what works and what doesn't in terms of bringing two disparate groups of people together. In recent years, I've been working as a mentor and an agent for artists where I have put these ideas and the solutions that I've come up with into practice. I've guided artists to achieve the success they want from both my individual coaching practice and a group coaching program that I have called the YES program. I put these ideas into a book that was published last month called Nine Steps to Artistic Freedom, Living the Artist's Life and Making It Sustainable. And it goes through the steps of the YES program. Artists who go through the steps are getting results that are truly transformational. They're reaching goals that they only dreamed of. And this makes me really happy. Most of all, it makes them really happy and it turns a negative attitude into a positive one because doors to possibility are opening. Today, we're gonna to talk to artist Susan Richardson, who is going to tell us about her experience of change. In the less than one year that I've spent with her, uh, working on her aspirations and her goals and her interests in moving her art career forward. Like many artists, Susan had talent, desire, and a great dream. But there were obstacles in her path that kept frustrating her and kept getting in her way, stopping her progress and making her feel frustrated and, and stuck. Susan's experience is pretty typical, and I'm sure it will resonate with you. 
admitting there are obstacles to reaching your dream is probably the first place or the starting point in making that commitment and that decision to move forward with your art career. You know, we all have blocks that hold us back. We all get stuck. Uh, It's just natural for us because we're human. But recognizing these things that get in the way, these obstacles, is what helps. It's what helps us move forward. When you become aware of them, then you can move them out of the way. Awareness is key. Um, And then also making a plan and having an insight, a goal in mind. Think of being a runner and running a race. If you're running a race that if you're a hurdler and you're running over hurdlers, it means jumping over them. Sometimes you kick the hurdles, knock them down. But if you're running a straight 100-meter dash with an end in sight, you're going to run and head straight to the finish line. So for artists, there are all sorts of things that come up, like not feeling like you're worthy of having a successful career or not sure if you're good enough and not thinking that you're, you've got something special to offer, you know, comparing yourself to other people can really make you feel bad. So I I recommend don't compare. Maybe you were told that artists don't make money and you shouldn't even try. Um, Or maybe you are just totally afraid of stepping out and being rejected And you don't have skills, you don't know how to talk about your art, or you don't know who to show it to and how to make a sale. These things can all get in the way. And they're real issues, so we're going to talk about them. I believe that recognizing these obstacles is just a warning sign. When you recognize them and you decide you want to make some changes, then things will start to happen. But I know that can be scary. And it might throw you right into resistance or paralysis. And you might even get stuck. I know, it happens to me too. And then you might settle and think, well, things aren't so bad. But one thing I know for sure is that if you keep doing things the same way, you're going to get the same results. And if you haven't been happy with those results, nothing's going to change. If you really want different results... You're going to have to make some changes. Uh, I have a tool for you that will help you to assess where you are in this process. It's a scorecard, and it will help you make a personal assessment for yourself. It helps identify the problems you might be facing and the solutions that you can take. It's downloadable and it's free. You can find it at thrivingartistnetwork.com. With that scorecard, you'll also get connected to me, the Art Ambassador, and you'll learn about the exciting things that are going on in my world, which is a world of art. I'm always out there looking at art, and I love to share that with you. Uh, You'll also be on my list to get timely tools, tips, and strategies that will help you with your art career. Uh, The URL, again, is thrivingartistnetwork.com. I invite you to sign up and get your free scorecard. Now, our artist today is Susan Richardson. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with Susan Richardson about her challenge. Susan's art is about how life is constantly changing and may be complicated. She says there's a messy richness to this. We'll talk about it more when we come back. You're listening to The Art Ambassador on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. Don't go away. We'll be Welcome back to The Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I have a wonderful guest for us today to talk with. I'm very excited. I appreciate her being here, Susan Richardson. Susan is an artist from Tracy, California, who makes paintings about her life as a woman who wears many hats. Susan's also had several careers. She She makes wonderful paintings that represent the journey of our lives. They're made up of layers of paint, text, papers, and hand lettering. 
They reflect our lives on the surface, and they also reveal the buried chapters that show only when the layers are peeled back. There are also attempts to reconcile Susan's search for deeper meaning with her desire to find success and recognition in the real world. The paintings are bold and strong, and as well as delicate and ephemeral, just like life. She wants you to feel the beauty and magic and mystery of life. She says, she calls it um, a kind of me messy richness. In my opinion, Susan really exceeds at showing us the beauty, magic, and mystery of life when you look at her paintings. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So good to have you here. I want to take us back in the beginning, almost a year, where, and ask you where you were with your art and your art career before you reached out to me. Well, Can I you had tell been us a making little about that? art for probably close to 40 years, ever since college. And I had taken countless workshops and classes, and I had been making art on my own. And I had had a little bit of success um, having some local exhibits. I had participated in street fairs. But I desperately, deeply wanted to show my work to a broader audience and be in galleries and exhibits where people would come and see it. And I just didn't know how to do that. And I would tell all the members of my family, I really want to be in a gallery. I really want to have an exhibit. For years I had been telling them this. And finally I got sick of hearing myself say, this is what I want, and I was no closer to getting it. And I had been getting your newsletter, your free newsletter, for several years. And I always read it carefully, and I always felt deep inside, if I ever get really serious, this is the woman I'm going to reach out to. And one day I was thinking these thoughts, and the newsletter came, and the headline was something like, are you ready to step up to the next level of your career? It was something like that. And I, it was like on TV, I spoke to the computer, yes, I am. And at that point, I emailed you, and you got back to me very quickly, and we started our conversation. I love that story, Susan. And I think that you're probably like a lot of artists. You are talking about something that you really, really want, and you just never get around to making that move. Uh, like I was saying before, we all need, sometimes, you know, we need to get rid of those obstacles in the way, or we just need a kick. And I'm so glad that newsletter worked out for you to give you the momentum to reach out to me. Yeah. Do you do you remember that uh, you had certain obstacles or barriers that were in your way that uh, maybe were holding you back? I think, you know, as I've thought of it, I think there were two kind of obstacles. One was just the practical, not really knowing the steps to take. And the other, which we have talked about quite a bit, was fear of taking those steps. And so I think between not really knowing what to do and being afraid of the rejection that I might get, I didn't pursue taking the steps um, on my own. I was afraid. Yeah, I can understand that. And, and the fears are very real. They're often there. Uh, sometimes there can be a fear for an artist of thinking that you're suddenly going to be plucked out of obscurity and and thrown into the limelight. And maybe as much as you want that, uh, you probably also recognize that you're not ready for it. Yeah. You told us, yeah. yeah and, and, and also it's that somewhat magical thinking that often gets uh, lodged in our minds where we'll think that uh, somebody's going to come and discover us and we're waiting yeah, for that magic to happen. Yes, probably like a lot of artists, I was waiting for that, you know, 
magical gallery owner from the wonderful gallery I was dreaming of to ring my doorbell and somehow say, we've heard about you. And I knew that wasn't going to happen, but part of me just so badly wanted something to swoop in and make it happen. And I think one of the big things that I've gotten from our working relationship is there are a series of steps to take. And that really helped demystify the process that it's not rocket science and it's not un unattainable, but there are certain steps that need to be taken to get to that goal. And it takes some time and effort to do it. It really does take time and effort. Um, and it is important to go through those steps uh, because what you get out of going through those steps is a deep-seated uh, preparation, and it starts with building a foundation. You want to always, when we make changes or when we move forward, we want to be building on a solid foundation. I think of that wonderful song by Harry Belafonte. When I was growing up, he sang it, and he said, a rock built on a a weak, a solid foundation will will grow. Something built on a weak foundation will fall apart. Um, so when when we work together, I'm I'm so glad that you uh, reached out for me and my timing was right, and that I was able to give you that incentive to reach out to to me. Uh, we're going to take another break, and I'd l like to find out more about. How, how our working together started changing things for you and uh, how your horizons were expanded. This is The Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm here with Susan Richardson. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back. It's Gwenda Joyce and our program, The Art Ambassador. We're coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I have artist Susan Richardson here with me today as my guest. Uh, Susan and I have worked together in a coaching relationship. And she's going to tell us next what started to change when uh, we started working together. Well, a few things started to change. One thing I wanted to mention is that I think that that day that I picked up the phone and said, I'm tired of just talking about this. I really am ready to make it happen. Something shifted in me. And picking up the phone to call was like making a commitment to my art, to that art career that I wanted. And once I made that commitment, I realized I had to believe that I was worth the money to sign up for a coaching program, to invest the time and effort, and if that's what I wanted, I needed to do the things that would make it happen. Um, the other thing I think I've really gotten out of our coaching relationship, because I signed up for the whole package. I did the YES program. I did the coaching. Um, I did the representation I just was like, if I want this to happen, I want everything. And um, you came to my house and you looked at my work and you recommended that I start working bigger. And that was something that other people had recommended to me and I had really wanted to do, but it meant getting a bigger space to work in. It meant thinking harder about my work because to work big meant really making a commitment to a big statement, and that made me believe more in my own artistic voice. And I think everything just rose a level when that happened. And the final thing that really shifted when we started working together was accountability, because we would have our coaching calls every few weeks. And you would recommend that I submit to shows to be in and exhibits and take start certain steps. And I didn't want to have the next call come and say, oh, I didn't really do that. And so it kept me moving forward. Before, it was like a month, two months, three months could go by, and I hadn't really done any of these things that I had thought about. And once we started working together, 
I was able to check off those boxes and things started to happen. I love hearing what you say, Susan, because these steps are so true. It all starts with a commitment that you make and a commitment for you to commit to yourself to actually get what you want out of your art. Yes. Yes, and then and the it's coaching hard with art because you hear so you know I think that was another thing I heard so many people say oh it's impossible to get into art galleries it's so competitive nobody ever really does and I kind of on one level believed that and in our very first call you said something like there's lots of galleries out there and they're looking for artwork and that just made so much sense to me. Um, so it's like, yes, this can happen, uh, which was kind of a revelation. Yes, it really can happen. I believe in you. I believe it can happen. And yet at the same time, I believe there are certain ways that you want to be prepared so that it does happen because Success is when preparation meets opportunity. I know there are opportunities out there. One of the first things that I teach artists is is something I believe is really important, and that is the ability to talk about your own art. Uh, You know this, Susan. A lot of people who've worked with me know that I really believe it's important to be able to answer this basic question when you're uh, meeting someone in conversation or at an opening or even in the line at Starbucks, I know that you as an artist are going to be asked, what kind of art do you make? It sounds great to be an artist. Tell me about your art. And if I, yeah. if you know, you know that that's important to me and I, you know that I taught that. Uh, coming from my own experience with meeting many, many artists, Uh, artists who I was really interested in finding out about, and if they couldn't answer the question, there was no conversation. So we worked on that a lot, Susan, and how did that that one basic skill transform your art career? Well, I thought I knew how to talk about my art, but when we started working together, I realized what I tended to just talk about was how I did it. I use paint, I collage, I use lettering. And yes, that's part of it. But to me, the really important thing is why I do it, what I'm trying to say with it. And that was the part I wasn't practiced at talking about. And I was actually a little afraid of either coming out sounding too much like a cliche or sounding too much like a preacher. And I dreaded having either of those labels. But what I found was when I started really talking from my heart what I was trying to say with my artwork, people were really interested. When I started talking about life is like layers, there's our past and our present and how it all comes together to make us, I'd see them nodding and like, tell me more. And um, that was very validating. And I also realized, and you taught me this, you have to have your longer statement and your shorter statement. Because if you're on the line in Starbucks or talking to someone in the art world, you don't have a lot of time. So getting to that short artist statement, what's sometimes called the elevator pitch, that I could just quickly give an idea of, how I made it, and also what it was about. That was so important. And once I started that, you know, when we first did it, I kept that short artist statement in my purse, in the pockets of my jeans, taped to the wall. So if anyone asked me, (laughs) I could say it. (laughs) And then the more I said it, after just a few times, it got much more comfortable. And now I feel very comfortable saying it, and I... I pretty much have it memorized, and it can change a little each time. And, you know, one other thing that has happened um, that artists listening might be interested in if they don't do, a lot of times I like your image of the Starbucks line because people will say, do you have something I can see? 
So I always have a piece on my iPhone that I can quickly go to and show them something. And they really like seeing what I'm talking about after I do the short artist statement. Susan, it sounds like you're really prepared. I love it. We're going to talk more with you about how this has led to your success. I'm Gwenda Joyce. We're on the Art Ambassador radio program. We're coming to you from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're talking with artist Susan Richardson about the the changes that have occurred in a very short year that she's been working with me to remove the obstacles and move forward with her career. After you, Susan, after you started working and using your short art statement that answered to the question, what kind of art do you make, you have told me that you started making connections with people in in, uh, in ways that you never had before about your art. And things started moving for you. Uh, Things started happening. But it also brought up some resistance for you. Uh, Resistance to continuing your growth and spending more money. And uh, can you tell, tell us a little bit about what came up for you as you were starting to get some success and starting to make more connections with people? Sure. Well, I started making more connections. The art started getting out there. And then one day I started thinking, this is costing a lot of money, and I haven't really made any sales yet. And how can I justify continuing to spend money when maybe I'll never make a sale or make money? And we had a coaching call, and I told you I think I want to take a break and not do this for a while. And you spotted that there was really fear beneath my decision to stop. And we had what turned out to be a real turning point, I think, in my moving forward to really talk about the fear. And it manifested as feeling like didn't want to spend more money on pursuing this goal, that maybe it was too much money and maybe I would never succeed. And it wound up shifting, and I think two things came out of that. One was realizing that the closer I got to the goal, the more I was afraid that I would fall on my face and fail. And my fear was kind of trying to protect me from that failure, that I would just be devastated if I put so much effort and money into this effort and I fell on my face. And not only would I know I fell on my face, but my friends and family and others would see it because I had started to have a little bit of visibility. And so the second part of that was realizing that What I wanted even more than to avoid the pain of rejection was to be able to live a life where when I looked back, I wouldn't have regrets. And so I got very clear that there are no guarantees. Yes, maybe I'd fall on my face, but A, I wouldn't be devastated. I'm strong enough to handle that. But more importantly, I want to be able to look back and know I did everything I could. I pursued this as strongly as I could, and I believed in myself, and I invested in myself, and there was a good chance it would work out. Um, But having no regrets is really important to me. So that was the big breakthrough that happened, and then all kinds of wonderful things started happening after that. Susan, I love that story. It's such an example of your personal courage. I really appreciate you sharing that with me. Uh, I think when we face uh, our our truths and when we face our fears, certain things happen. Uh, You had a chance to face your fears and also get clear on what was really important to you and that your success and your moving forward with this was something that's so important to you and and so basic to you that 
that you really wanted to continue with that. And, and um, I'm, I'm so glad you did. You have gone on to get some uh, really nice successes that are, they're more, they're showing up more. You know, in the beginning, these, this change and growth is intangible. It doesn't really show up. But the results do come. Uh, tell us some of the things that started happening with your artwork. Well, um, I started submitting to a lot more exhibits. And as obvious a thing as that is, before we started working together, I rarely submitted to juried exhibits. And you were very clear that that was a really important step to take on this journey towards gallery representation, which was what I thought of as my big goal. And um, so, duh, if you don't submit, you don't get in. And I started submitting quite a bit. And one of the things I learned from that is, yeah, I got some rejection. Um, And I got used to it. It's like, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. I tried. And what's the next one I want to submit to? Because there's a lot of calls for artists out there. And so I got accepted into quite a few. And just getting accepted was thrilling. But one of the most recent exhibits I submitted to, which was a Central Valley Art Association call for artists for a juried show, and it was at the Mifflin Gallery in Modesto, Not only did I have five pieces accepted into this really competitive show, but I won the best of show, which was woohoo, flabbergasting, amazing. There was even a cash prize of $500 that went with it. Um, But the feeling inside was worth much more than $500. It was just this validation that... You have to get your art in front of the right people, and you know you said that's something exactly in the right, of, Susan. Yeah. When we get we we're going to take a break now. I want to hear more about how this spurred you on, uh, starting to get your work into some of these public juried, very competitive shows. This is Gwenda Joyce. I'm the art ambassador. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Stick with us. We'll hear more. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Art Ambassador on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. I'm here with Susan, Susan Richardson, who has just gotten into a very competitive show at the Mislin Gallery. Tell us what happened, Susan. Well, I submitted to the show, and, um, you know, I had sort of learned, like, you get into some, you don't get into others, and one day I got a phone call that um, I had won the best of show from that exhibit, and um, it was just a huge honor, and there was a wonderful art opening with You know, just like I had dreamed about the art opening with the wine and cheese and people clinking glasses and dressed up in nice clothes, and I got to go up in front and receive my Best of Show award. There were photographers. So it was kind of like one of those dream come true evenings where I just had to partly pinch myself but mainly just say this not only can happen but it is happening So that was huge. And then it led you on to another big event that you had. Uh, You had been invited to participate in uh, a four-person hanging of your work at the Marker Hotel in San Francisco. Uh, Tell us about what happened during the installation of of your paintings at this uh, very prestigious location in downtown San Francisco. Yes. Um... Well, I belong to an organization called ArtSpan, which is a nonprofit in San Francisco that helps artists to get their artwork out in front of the public. And they have a show called Art, in, uh, um, a program called Art in Neighborhoods. And they will send out calls for artists for different venues. And this one came for the Marker Hotel, which is on Geary Street in downtown San Francisco. 
it's not only one of the most prestigious streets, but it's the street that has many art galleries, like really beautiful high-end art galleries. And so I was accepted into this show at the Marker Hotel with three other artists, and the day came to hang our work. And they had been particularly interested in large works, which thanks to Gwenda, I had been doing some very large works. And um, in fact, I had to rent a truck to bring them there. And they were all set up leaning against the wall. And one of the hotel guests saw one of my pieces called For Gatsby that was leaning against the wall. And she said, I really love this. Tell me about it. And I was able to talk about it, not just how I made it, but more importantly, how it, why I was inspired to make it. And she said, I love it, and I want to buy it. It hadn't even gotten hung on the wall yet. And she was a hotel guest from Texas, so the piece is still up hanging in the hotel. But at the end of the show, at the end of November, it will get shipped to her in Texas. It was the biggest sale I've made, and it was really the culmination, I think, of all the work we've done together, of feeling comfortable talking about it, of having, we talked a lot about prices and what was a good price for the kind of artwork I was doing, and I was comfortable saying the price, and she loved it, Um, and she's happy to have it, and that's a big lesson. It's not like... I'm trying to push my art on people. I'm just putting it out there so the people who it speaks to can find it and enjoy it and have it in their homes. So uh, that was another big stepping stone, big event on the journey. That's very important. Congratulations on that wonderful sale. Um, Thank you. It's it's really indicative of how much you've changed and this idea that we were talking about before of the magical thinking that had gone on. Um, I think you've really transformed your whole way of showing up in the world, showing up to the public, and uh, presenting your art in a way that has taken the steps and taken them out, taken you out into the world in a way where you're really being yourself and meeting the public uh, through your art as who you are. Uh, I'm so, yeah. so pleased with your, your growth and your success. And, and now I, I think that you're kind of ready for the next step, the next phase. Um, our goal together was to uh, help you get gallery representation and you really didn't know how to proceed. Uh, you w- participated in the individual coaching, and you also took the the steps through that I taught you through the Yes program, uh, the nine steps to artistic freedom that are uh, that you go through in the book that I had to have just published. Uh, so now, do you feel like you got the preparation and and that you're ready to move forward? What would what would you say about that next step of finding gallery representation? How how do you feel about that coming up for you? Well, you said something in the very beginning of this show, don't compare yourself to other artists. And I think that was a really important thing for me because in the past I'd go to galleries and I'd look at the art and think, this isn't really like mine. I probably will never be able to get in a gallery. And you totally turned that on its head. You said to me, no one else is doing what you're doing, and that's a good thing. And that has been such a big opening for me, that the goal isn't to make art like other people. It's to make art like me. And I said to you the other day, and it's so true, since we've been working together, I feel like I'm more me. And every step I've taken to do the things that I thought, this is so me, I don't know if it's, you know, it's good or not, you've supported me and encouraged me, and I've gotten the validation from these outside successes um, to be more me. And um, it sounds maybe obvious, but it's not so easy to do all the time. I I love what you say. Again, Susan, I love it because uh, 
I think there are so many forces out there that in the world that make us feel like we have to uh, sublimate ourselves for something that someone else wants and or wants us to be. And with art, uh, art is so personal to you and who you are that I, I truly believe that the best art is art that really comes from that true source of who each of you as artists is. And uh, it's my goal to help you bring that out into the world. Uh, I'm seeing evidence of your growth and I'm so uh, proud of you for all your success. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you, thank you so much for being here and uh, showing your, your courage and your willingness to share the, the things that have been really important to you. Thank you so much, Susan Richardson. Thank Susan, you, uh, Wanda. I'll be back. Susan's going to leave us. Uh, but tell us, Susan, your, where we can find your artwork. You can find it. I have a website, um, which is susanrichardson.com. And until Once again, November thank 20- you, Susan. Uh, thank you for being here. We are coming to you from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce. We'll be Hello, welcome back. This is the Art Ambassador. I'm your host, Gwenda Joyce, coming to you from Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Today we talked to Susan Richardson, an artist from the San Francisco Bay Area, Northern California. Uh, Susan has been a client of mine in my coaching program for individual coaching and group coaching, the YES program. And she talked a lot about the different obstacles that she had uh, throughout the time that we worked together. It hasn't even been a year yet, but she's gotten through so many of them. Susan works hard and is really making a difference in her career. Uh, She went from not really having a plan or not knowing what she wanted or how to get where she wanted to go. Uh, she, She had this sort of dream that maybe somebody would show up at her door and say, I want you in my gallery and I'm going to make you a star. Well, I don't think she'd admit to it, but that kind of magical thinking sits in the back of many artists' minds. Susan had a journey that I think is very similar to you. And uh, when she reached out to me, and reached out for me as her coach to help her through some of these obstacles. Uh, I really appreciated that. It's a show of strength to work to reach out and get some help and some guidance. Uh, Susan, some of the things that Susan said that really helped were helpful for her were that she had a clear idea of things to do when she started working with me that I held her accountable to them, and she held herself accountable to them. So she was sure to get them done. She got a lot of feedback, and she was able to adjust things as she went along and then go through the different steps. In the process, it deepened her commitment to her own success, and it deepened her investment in that success. Now she's doing more of what she wants and wants to do, and she's reaping the benefits. She's making sales of her art. She's getting shows. uh, She's building a whole new community around her art. And she's making art also that she really feels like is her. There are so many changes. She's thrilled, uh, and she has opened the doors to possibilities. I'm so proud of the the way she has stepped up to the plate and she starts talking to people about her work. Uh, She's hiring people to help her, such as someone to do her website, a professional photographer, and she's ready to hire a gallery. I I think that will be her next step. Um, It's been a big turnaround for Susan, and Susan is just like many of you, who could just use some guidance, some skill building. Uh, What she wasn't ready for a year ago, she's ready for now. She's prepared to meet the opportunity as it comes up. 
and she makes opportunities that happen for her. I invite you to check out the YES program. You can look at the website artambassador.net, uh, find the YES program under products and programs, and uh, join me the next time. This is Gwenda Joyce, the Art Ambassador. It's been a thrill having you here today. We're on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Network. See you next week. Bye for now.